The Tony Award-winning musical, Kimberly Akimbo, tells the story of a teenager with a rare genetic disorder that causes her to age four times faster than normal. Now playing at the Pantages Hollywood, the musical is based on a play by Pulitzer Prize-winning playwright David Lindsay Abair, who teamed up with Tony Award-winning composer Janine Tesori. It's Kimberly Kimbo is a musical comedy about a teenage girl with an aging disease. So she's played by an older actress. She deals with regular things that teenagers deal with, like first love and pressures at school. But she also has to contend with her highly dysfunctional family and her own mortality at the same time. I mean, at the end of the day, the heart of the show is about making the most of the time that we have left. Kimberly is desperately trying to fix her family. She wants them to see her as she truly is. And um, she meets a new best friend that actually sees her exactly as she wants to be seen. Kimberly Akimbo was a play before it was a musical. It was one of my very first plays. It was commissioned by South Coast Rep in Costa Mesa. And so the very first production was done in 2001 was like my third absurdist comedy. Um, but I really felt like I was starting to lean into a more emotional, more personal place than my previous plays. I first met Janine Tesori when we were teamed up on Shrek the Musical, actually. I was just the book writer. And then we found ourselves in need of a lyricist. And it was Janine's idea, like most things, <laughs> for me to become a lyricist. It was. In the midst of working on Shrek, that I think we said, you know, we should do something else. And it was David's idea to work privately and to find something and, and work by ourselves for a while. And then um, I suggested one of his plays, because there was already something there for you to work with. And I thought, oh, Kimberly, I just love this play so much. I'm always looking in musicals to put someone on stage I haven't seen before, ever. And I've never seen anyone like this, someone who clearly has the silhouette and the identity of an older woman. And it's great to put that in the musical theater canon because there are not a ton of them. I like the way you make a point. I like your frame of mind. A little quick, a little sharp, a little beat behind. I like the way you crack a I think Anagram, which is my favorite song, fires on all these cylinders. And because um, musicals, you can sing your inner thoughts and it doesn't seem, I mean, I do that all the time, but. <laughs> yes, I've, been, I've been in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was a tricky song to write, actually, because I got way too clever in trying to write it because I thought, oh, it should be built like an anagram. And so the lyrics themselves were all mixed up. And oh, right. Remember? And you were yeah. like, what? what are you doing? It was so impossible to write. Mm -hmm. and, you were, and you stopped me and said, maybe the anagram could be in the background, and maybe we want to hear from Kim during that moment. And that's what really made the song come to life. Anagram starts like this. Um, it's basically, it, it's almost, it almost feels like um, a little, not a circus, but it's a little calliope. And one of the things that I, um, and she sings, I like the way you see the world. I like your point of view. A little strange, a little, a little bit askew. askew. I like, so she goes on singing as he's doing, um, figuring out the puzzle. And when I was a kid, I played this piece. I think it's public domain. that for years and years they would have this, you know, and I thought, oh, it would be cool if you could just do a variation about how she's sort of a little bit on a high wire, like a little bit, you know, that's, that's basically like a, a puppet. Um, I think it's called the puppet, that, that little piece. So that's, that's where I came from. I've never heard that. No? You've never told me that. Really? No. No, he didn't, no, yeah. not true. The music in the show is so thought out. Every single note is purposeful. It's so moving and, and emotionally charged in a way that's just both hilarious and like makes me want to cry, you know? It takes you on a roller coaster of highs and lows, and the lyrics are so witty and fun. 
but also really hit you in the gut. I mean, I'm weirdly maybe more excited about the tour than I was about being on Broadway. Broadway is, of course, great. But, you know, when I was coming up, I didn't see Broadway shows. I didn't live in New York City. I lived in Boston, and the shows that I saw were all at the Colonial Theater in Boston. I would see tours come through. It was because of the tours that I became a playwright, honestly. There's nothing more gratifying to know that, oh, there's going to be kids seeing my show, and grown-ups as well. But maybe there's a playwright out there sitting in the theater that goes on, and 20 years later will be saying, oh, I saw this show when I was a kid at the Colonial. It was called Kimberly Akimbo. Kimberly Akimbo is playing at the Pantages through November 3rd. Go to broadwayandhollywood.com to buy your tickets. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. For more stories in your communities, click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV for the latest information, balanced coverage, weather updates every 10 minutes, and more. We'll see you then.